All right. So there are just very few ingredients here. And let me, I like to double check my recipe page to make sure I'm telling you the right stuff. There's just dates, water, and fruit. Easy, easy. And if you didn't have any fruit, you could just make date syrup, which is dates and water. So get your blender out. If you have a high speed blender like this, it's going to give you a more smooth consistency. If you don't have a high speed blender, it'll still work, especially if you soak your water and your dates first, which I have done. So this is one and a half cups of water and four ounces of pitted dates, about six to eight dates. My dates were really big today, so I think I only use six. So when I buy dates at the store, in the old days, I could get them in bulk, but nowadays I just uh, get them in the clamshell like this. And if you've never used medjool dates, this is what they look like. They're not a dried fruit. They just come off the tree like this, nice and soft. And they do have a really hard pit, so you wanna make sure you take that pit out. And if you've never tried dates, they taste like brown sugar or maple syrup. They're just very delightful. So you can buy them like that. You can buy them like this. I find that if I, like this brand in particular, is always high quality. Sometimes when I buy them in the bulk section, they're not as good quality or they're a little bit older and kind of harder. All right. So I've got my four ounces of dates in here and I do tend to put the ounce measurements with dates and nuts because they come in different sizes. Sometimes your nuts will be uh, chopped up when you buy them. Sometimes they'll be whole. Sometimes you'll get big dates. Sometimes you'll get little dates. Sometimes you have deglet noir dates, which are about half the size of medjool in which case you would use twice as many. And if you do use the deglet noir that come in the bag and they say pre-pitted, make sure you cut each one in half just to make sure because they seem to miss every 20th pit in there. All right, so we've got that in there. And then for this recipe, I'm doing a strawberry date syrup. So this is a half cup of strawberries, just sliced strawberries. If you wanted to use uh, raspberries or blueberries or mango or what else could we use? You could use any kind of fruit you want. All right, so I'm gonna put those in the blender here. So we're just gonna blend this until very smooth. You know what, these look, this looks a little on the watery side and I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more dates here just to kind of thicken it up. And maybe as it sits, it would probably thicken up a bit, but I'm just gonna add a couple more dates. These are really soft, so they don't need to soak. And maple syrup is just pure sugar. So this is a little different in that we have water in the syrup because we need something to blend with the dates. If you want to use a fruit juice or something, you could probably do that too. But don't use non-dairy milk. It's not quite as good as the water. All right. Sounds like I missed a pit in there. I thought I just took two pits out. I guess I missed one. All right, well, this is a good learning moment here. Let me, let me show you what I do when I miss a pit because I still do that every once in a while. And you could, I don't know if you could hear that, but it sounded like a little piece of glass going around in there. So if you do miss a pit, you gotta pour it out. Don't put your hand in the blender. Pour it out, make sure your hands are clean. And then just find that pit. And sometimes hard dates sound like a pit in there, but 
Uh, is there a pit in there? Oh, it might still be in the bottom here. Yes, it is. All right, look at that. It still happens to me. I can't believe it. All right, so get your pit out. You also don't want to keep blending if you have a pit because it will dull your blades. So just take a moment, even though it's a drag, get that pit out. Okay. All right, so that's a little bit better. Okay. So, we're all done. That looks a little bit better. And I think it will thicken up a tiny bit as it sits. So just get some kind of uh, container to pour it into. Maybe you have like a cute little syrup container or gravy boat type thing that has a spout. But this is kind of cute and it comes with a lid. It's like a little mason jar with a handle on it. And then you can just put it in the refrigerator like that. And then you can also easily pour from that. So you can see the consistency. It's thin, it's not too thick. You can thicken it up or thin it down however you like. If you wanted to add, you know, some vanilla or some cinnamon or something else, go ahead, have fun with it in that case. All right, so that is step one. Those have been soaking. Step two is we are going to grind some rolled oats in our Vitamix here. Now where I work at True North Health Center, as I said before, is they're very whole food focused. So if they can make it from a whole food, they will not buy things in packages sold at the store. And, want, and that happens with flour. So they never buy store-bought flour. If they want flour, they just grind it themselves. And that's what I do too. And there's a couple benefits to that. One is you don't have a lot of extra flour laying around your house. I used to always have bags of flour that for years that would never be used. Um, another thing is it tastes better when you grind and that pretty much goes for anything, you know, uh, like uh, cumin seeds and cardamom seeds. When you grind it yourself, it's just going to taste better. So we are going to do that. If you, really didn't want to grind it yourself in your Vitamix, you can use store-bought flour, um, but try it this way. It just, it just adds something yummy to the taste. All right, so this is one and a half cups of old-fashioned oats. And the oats, you can use any kind of rolled oats that you want. Ever since COVID started, I've been buying my oats in the bag because the bulk section is not as available. So I've been, it's a little more pricey. These are also gluten-free. Um, and I just love the taste of these even better than the bulk oats. So they must be better quality, but they're so good. So one and a half cups of oats. And we're just gonna grind this into a flour. If you've never done this, it's super easy. You just grind it for like 20 seconds until it looks like flour. All right. Now I'm just using my regular Vitamix jar. Uh, they do make a grain jar, so if you want to get that, you can. But this this works pretty darn good. Um, so you can see. Here, I'll move this aside. Da, 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 there's my bowl. You can see how easy that is. It looks like flour. If you want it finer, just keep blending it longer. If you want it coarser, blend it less time. So there's our oat flour, and we are gonna add to that, what is this, half cup of cornmeal. Cornmeal and pancakes is so good because it helps it not, 
the pancakes not be mushy and it just gives a fun texture. Now you want to use just regular cornmeal, not corn flour, not masa harina, uh, not polenta, not medium grind, not coarse grind. If you can only get a medium grind or coarse grind polenta, you can grind it in the blender to make it a little bit finer. But if you don't grind it down, it's gonna you're gonna get crunchy corn stuff in your teeth. So, all right. So half cup of cornmeal, organic yellow cornmeal, half teaspoon, or what is it? Mm -mm -mm, half teaspoon cinnamon. And then to help it rise, we're going to put in one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and then a half teaspoon of baking soda. Now baking powder and baking soda both have sodium in them. So if you want sodium free, versions of that, look on my website store at straightupfood.com and you can get sodium free of both of those. If you're trying to be completely knock all the sodium out of your diet. I'm not so hard lined about that because I don't use these that often. Pancakes and baked goods and stuff like that are kind of once in a while treats. So, uh, but I know some people are trying to cut all the sodium out. So that is an option for you. Okay. So once you have all your dry ingredients in the bowl, uh, I like to use a whisk. You can use a fork. Just mix it all together. And this is something that is very common in, in baking. You always want to mix your dry ingredients together thoroughly before you add the wet ingredients. Because you want especially that baking powder and baking soda evenly distributed so it's not all in one lump somewhere. Okay. So we're going to just set this aside. All cut up. So we're going to put uh, three tablespoons of lemon juice in the pancakes. And then we're also going to put some lemon zest in there. And you want to zest before you juice. Because once you juice and you're halves of your lemon are all soft because you've juiced them, it's harder to zest them. So zest first. You want to use a microplane. This is just a very fine tooth, small tooth grater, very sharp. You can get this, I think I have this in my store. You can also get it anywhere that they sell kitchen stuff. It's very common. So to zest, what you want to do is wash your lemon, dry it off, and then I was taught to do three passes. One, two, three, in the same spot. One, two, three, turn it. One, two, three, turn it. And let me remind myself of how much zest. So one tablespoon lemon zest. And just go around, kind of start at the top and just go around. If you wanted to do maybe a tangerine or an orange, that would probably work too. I've never tried that, but citrus is pretty interchangeable. You might not want to do a lime, but the sweet citrus, well, maybe a lime would work. If a lemon would work, I don't know. Lime pancakes, I don't know if that would be good. So just go all the way around. And the reason that you want to just do three, I don't know why I'm looking at it each time, um, is because the flavor is in the yellow, it's not in the white. So we just are trying to get the yellow. And you know what, before I started teaching and creating recipes, I never zested a lemon. It just seemed so like fancy, gourmet, woo woo, whatever. But man, I do it all the time now. It just, especially because I'm not adding, uh, using salt in my cooking, any extra flavor that I can get is, is good. And lemon is definitely a, a nice little flavor pop. All right, we are getting, so we're, I think I have more than a tablespoon there. And I'm remembering some tools that I did not get out. So let me grab my, my uh, pastry scraper here. So this is called the pastry scraper or bench scraper. And we're going to measure about one 
tablespoon. That's quite a bit. Usually one tablespoon of zest is about one lemon's worth. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this aside and use this to clean up my cutting board. And now we are going to get our lemon juice. So now that this is zested, go ahead and cut it in half. By the way, this is my favorite knife. It's called a Mac. It's on my website store if you're interested. It's just the perfect length. This is my everyday knife, even that I even I even use it to cut apples and just everyday stuff. This is my chef's knife that is a little bit longer that I use to cut onions and cabbage and butternut squash and things where I kind of need um, more length and more power there. And you know what? I don't know where I got this juicer, probably from the thrift store, but it's still the one that I use most often. I have this one as well, uh, but I just love this one. It seems to get out more juice. And I have this special cup that is designated just for juicing because it fits this little juicer so well. Now this calls for three tablespoons, which is about juice from one medium lemon. So that's one way you can juice. If you do want to use this other kind of juicer, you will want to put your flat side down, not like this because the holes are in the bottom. And so this one works really well too. It can be a little messier because it can squirt out the sides. So sometimes I put my hand over it, but sometimes I need both my hands to squeeze it and then kind of turn it sideways so that juice can come out. Ugh. All right. Okay, so let me get a tiny little bowl real quick to put my zest in. I need my measuring spoon. So there's our one tablespoon, and then we're gonna do three tablespoons of lemon juice. So let's move on. So we're on step three. We are gonna pour our two cups non-dairy milk. I'm using soy milk and our dates into the Vitamix. And what was I gonna show you? This is the non-dairy milk I'm using today, just the West Soy Organic Unsweetened Soy Milk. You can use any kind of non-dairy milk that you like. I like this one because this is the ingredient list. I don't know if you can see that, it's really short. It's just soybeans and water. You can also make your own non-dairy milk. I have four recipes for that in my cookbook almond, pecan, rice, and oat. It's super easy. So I'll have some of this on hand at home and then I'll also make almond milk every so often. What was I just gonna say? Oh, when I do use this on my oatmeal, um, I always cut it because this is pretty rich. So I will put about, I'll, I'll use these mason jars and I'll put about a third of this milk in here and I'll fill up the rest with filtered water because I don't like my milk on my cereal to be really thick. So that's just one little tip and it also makes your non-dairy milk last longer and overall less expensive. All right, so that was step, we're on step three. So this is the dates, how many dates? Let me remind myself, uh, two ounces, which is about three to four dates. Hopefully I got all the pits out of this one. We'll see. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. So we're just going to blend this till it's smooth. pretty quickly because my dates were soaking for a while so so we're going to go ahead and pour this into our dry ingredients 
along with our lemon zest and our lemon juice. I don't like to blend the zest because then it's too crazy zesty. So I like to just stir it in. You know what? I think you could also blend everything in the Vitamix except the zest, and that would probably work too. But this is kind of the more traditional way of doing it. Maybe I should use my uh, whisk for this. What did I do with my whisk? Is it right in front of me? Yes, here it is. So using the whisk will just help you get out any lumps. And if you've ever made pancakes, you know that they're kind of, th it's kind of thin after you mix it and then it thickens up as it sits. And if it becomes too thick, we'll just add a little bit more of the non-dairy milk. All right. So we are gonna set this aside while we get our frying pan ready. So this is the pan that I'm gonna be using today. It is an Ozeri, O-Z-E-R-I. This is on my website store if you wanna check it out. And I'm gonna turn it on to kind of a medium. This little portable stove cooks really hot and fast. So I'm gonna put it down kind of low. And whenever I have a pan heating, I'll just put a little bit of water in there. And when that starts sizzling, I'll know that it's time put my pancake batter on. All right. So let's see. Oh, you know what I need? I need my ladle. There it is. This ladle is about a half cup, so I'm gonna do about half cup pancakes here. It's not sizzling yet. Maybe I should turn it up a bit. You definitely don't want it on high though because what will happen is your pancakes will cook very quickly. They'll get very brown and then the insides will be kind of mushy. So we want it on, what I do with my plate here? So you can see how that, can you see that? Uh, that little water is now bubbling which tells us that our pan is getting nice and ready. That might even be a little hot. And the longer that your pan sits on the heat, the hotter it will get, even if you're not increasing the heat. And you know how it goes with pancakes. The first one is always kind of the practice one, same with waffles. So if you want, you can just do a little practice one. Okay, so I know that's hot. I'm just gonna pour that out. I'm using a nonstick pan because I don't use oil in my cooking. And this is a, a pretty economically priced pan. I forget how much it is. 30 something dollars, I think. It's always a little nerve wracking to make pancakes and waffles in a live class just in case they don't turn out. But I have had good luck with this pan in the past. Now, as far as your spatula goes, you wanna get one with kind of a big, what do you call this, the head of the spatula, and you want that end to be nice and tapered. See how it goes from thick to thin? And then the other thing is, is, uh, Get silicone, don't get plastic. So don't buy your spatula at the 99 cent store. Go to a, um, a kitchen place. This one is OXO actually, I just noticed that, OXO brand. And when you get silicone instead of plastic, you're not gonna get that, you know, it's not gonna melt at the end. I'm sure everybody's had one of those in their drawer or growing up or something where it's kind of melted and then you can't get under the pancake very well. So get one of these, they're really, wonderful. They're good for hash browns, veg burgers, and so is this pan because normally you need oil on the pan if you're making burgers or hash browns and having 
at least one nonstick pan like this really is nice to have in your kitchen. That That's looking good. So what you can do at this point is just kind of, that looks like it's getting, it's really nerve wracking making pancakes in front of 84 people. But I have faith, I have faith. If you're feeling like it's gonna stick at all, just kind of go around the edges, help it out. Whoop, look at that. Isn't that nice? It's a little, it's burning a little bit hot. So let me turn it down just a little bit. Now, you have probably made pancakes in your life where you have the dark ring and then the light ring and then another dark ring. And that is because it's not a good quality pan. So invest in a nice quality. This is a 12 inch, I think, frying pan and you will get these nice evenly cooked pancakes. When you get a good quality pan, it's gonna just cook evenly and it's just gonna look better, it's gonna taste better, and all of that stuff. Let's try another one and maybe not get it quite so brown here. And you can also do two or three at a time, but I'm just doing one at a time to keep it safe. So you see how fast those bubbles came up? This is a very fast cooking portable stove. See, so I would probably turn it down even a little bit more. But that looks pretty good. See that little white around the edges? That's, it's fine. It's just not as perfect as the first one. So I put my one pancake there. I'm gonna add this one and I am determined to do one and if you get kind of this little gritty stuff on there just do this and then kind of shake it out or wipe it off with a paper towel okay you can see that the batter is thickening up just a little bit all right I'm going to try one more because I want to see if I can get it less dark and if you see those bubbles coming on just really quick that probably means it's a little too hot So what am I going to do with these lovely little pancakes? What I like to do is I love bananas, so I'm going to put some bananas on top. You can put any kind of fruit that you like on top, blueberries, some cut up strawberries, nothing. Um, come on guys, I want them to look nice here. Okay, I don't want the end one in there, I'll just put that one down here. We have company, so we have to make a nice presentation. Oh, okay. Let's flip this one, go around the edges. See how nicely that goes under there? There we go. There's our perfect color. Now let me get my syrup here. Maybe I should invite my next door neighbor over for a breakfast brunch. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way without burning myself so I can show you the final, final beautiful plate here. Now, the thing with the, the syrup is, as I said earlier, uh, maple syrup is 100% sugar. This does have water in it, so it will taste great it will make your pancakes probably a little soggier than a maple syrup. If you want, you can just put it on the side. That's what I do sometimes. I get a bite ready and then I dip it in the syrup instead of putting the syrup all over. But today I'm gonna just put it all over. Oh, it's so good. So good, all right. And then if you want, this is optional. You can get your rotary cheese grater that you'd no longer use for cheese. And instead of putting cheese in the chamber, put some nuts in there. And this just adds a little bit of richness to your waffles or your pancakes or your salad or your pasta. It's just a good little trick. And this is the best one, I think, this Xylus, which is on my website. And then you just turn it sideways and you crank it. And, uh, I'll go ahead and take a bite for you. 
That is the proper way to end a cooking show, right? Mmm. 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 So good. So I think pancakes and waffles should be eaten as soon as they come off the frying pan or off the waffle iron. But you can also just make a bunch, put them in the oven on warm, and then serve everybody at the same time. You can also do um, blended fruit, like raspberries, strawberries, and then just zero dates, or one date, or two dates. That way you'll get less water, because fruits already have water in them. Pick up a copy of the book, and I will see you next time. All right, thank you.